All right, guys, today the uh, lecture is going to be on cell structure and function. And first thing we need to uh, look at is what exactly is a cell? So a cell is going to be the smallest structural and functional unit of a living thing. Uh, they are microscopic and contain a membrane surrounding a cytoplasmic core which surrounds smaller structures. So this membrane, if you recall from last unit, is going to may, be made primarily of phospholipids. Phospholipids, remember, were the lipids made of glycerol, two fatty acid tails which were nonpolar okay, or hydrophobic, and the phosphate head which was going to be hydrophilic. Okay. Then there's going to be various types of materials like proteins and carbohydrates, glycoproteins, glycolipids, uh, that are also associated with this membrane. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the scientists who worked to discover the cell. And if we take a look here, these five gentlemen, uh, working at various points throughout history, found various items that were ultimately combined into one idea. So let's take a look at our first scientist, Robert Hooke. And what Robert Hooke did is he named the cells. Uh, he named them cells based on the fact that they reminded him of little rooms in a monastery which were uh, called cells. And what he was looking at was dead plant material. He was looking at cork cells. Uh, Leeuwenhoek is the first to actually see uh, protists, so single-celled organisms. Uh, he called them animacules. Um, and so he was using a very crude microscope uh, in order to see these first unicellular organisms. Okay, Schleiden or Schleiden, uh, he was the first to state that all plants were made of cells. Now we have to look at it this way. Did he actually look at every single cell uh, from every single plant? And the answer is no, but what he would have done was looked at enough specimens or he could make this inference based on what he had seen. The next scientist, Schwann, uh, the nice thing about this is uh, his last name kind of reminds you of an animal, a swan. And so he was the individual that stated that all animals are made of cells. And same thing uh, as we talked about with Schleiden, that he did not look at every single animal that has ever uh, been around, but he looked at enough specimens, enough samples, to confidently say that all animals were made of cells. And then the last gentleman here, Virchow, uh, he stated that all cells come from pre-existing cells. Uh, and all of these ideas combined together, all right, led to the cell theory. So in the cell theory, we have three major ideas. The first idea is going to be that all living things are made of cells. So if you remember Schleiden and Schwann, they talked about how plants and animals were made of cells. And then if you think about Leeuwenhoek, uh, looking at the protozoa, uh, again, those are single-celled organisms. So all living things are made of cells. Next, we have that cells are the basic unit of structure and function in living thing. Okay, so in living things, you've got unicellular organisms, the cell is the organism, and then you have multicellular organisms like plants, animals, and fungi, all right, where they are made up of a uh, conglomeration of cells, okay, many different types of cells doing different things. Uh, the thing about a unicellular organism is it has to perform all of the life functions on its own. So for bacteria and protozoa, they have to do all of the life functions. They have to be able to create energy, obtain, use energy. They have to be able to replicate. Um, they have to be able to maintain stable conditions. Okay, All of those different characteristics of life. And then lastly, thinking about Virchow's statement, so all cells come from pre-existing cells. So these three ideas make up the cell theory. And remember, a theory is simply a time-tested concept believed to be true. It is based on information, based on facts. But remember, facts can change. 
All right, so now let's take a look at the two main types of cells. So I mentioned to you we had unicellular organisms and we had multicellular organisms. But what I didn't tell you is we can also break them down based on whether or not they have a nucleus. And so if we take a look here, we've got two types of cells. The first, prokaryotes, are going to be organisms that do not contain uh, a nucleus. They have genetic information, but it is just not surrounded by a nuclear envelope. It's not surrounded by a nuclear membrane. And then our eukaryotes are cells that do have uh, a membrane surrounding their nucleus. So let's take a little bit closer look at prokaryotes. So for prokaryotic cells, we have things such as bacteria. And if you take a look at the bacteria here, you can see that we've got some DNA in here, all right? But the DNA is not surrounded by a nuclear membrane, okay? So prokaryotic cells, we have two groups. We have the RK bacteria and we have the U bacteria. And one of the biggest differences between those groups of organisms is going to be the materials that make up their surroundings. Okay, there are going to be some genetic differences as well, but one of the major things is going to be the material that makes up their cell wall surroundings. All right, so for eukaryotic cells, here we have a much larger group of organisms. And so for these organisms, we're going to have things like plant and animal cells. Okay, so plants and animals, we also have fungi and protists uh, would be included in the eukaryotic organisms. So eukaryotic organisms, again, are, are organisms that have a nucleus. Okay, they have a membrane surrounding their genetic material. All right, taking a closer look at the plant cell here, hopefully you can see based on this that these organisms are also going to be a little bit more complex than the bacteria that we have. There are many more different types of structures associated with the cell. Okay, this would be for both the plant cell and for the animal cell. Again, very much a complex uh, structure. And remember, this is the basic unit of any living thing, a cell. In this case, we're looking at an animal cell. The previous slide was a plant cell. Hopefully you'll notice some of the differences and maybe some of the organelles that are located there. And as we move through the lecture in Unit 2, we will talk about those organelles in a bit more detail. All right, so if we're taking a look at parts that are common to all cells, now we're talking about both prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells. If we take a look here, we can see things such as genetic material. So we've got DNA here. Okay, we've got DNA in the nucleus here. Uh, and then we're also going to have DNA in our nucleus here. So that's going to be something that's common to all cells. Uh, cell membrane is also going to be common. So if we take a look here, we've got cell membrane, this yellow uh, outline here on, he on this organism here. Uh, we've got a cell membrane on the inside here. That's going to be this plasma membrane, this uh, very thin uh, red line in this organism here. And then here we've also got this yellow uh, membrane here. Remember that the cell membrane, whether we're talking about our prokaryotic organisms or our eukaryotic organisms, the cell membrane is going to be made up primarily of phospholipids. Okay, And then a third thing that they're all going to have in common is going to be cytoplasm. Cytoplasm is going to be the material on the inside of the membrane where we'll find all of the organelles and all of the cell structures uh, that the organisms uh, contain. All right, so now if we take a look at some differences, though, we can see things like uh, over here in the animal cell, we have centrioles. These are structures that are going to aid in cell division. Uh, they are found in animal cells, but you do not find them in plant cells. Um, if you take a look at the plant cell, you see something called a chloroplast. Okay, the chloroplast is going to be found in plant cells and in other photosynthetic organisms. All right, and this is responsible for photosynthesis. You can take a look here and you can see that this structure, they don't have any of these large organelles. Okay, so their prokaryotic organisms are very basic organisms. Uh, something else that you'll see that they do have in common uh, is ribosomes. Ribosomes are the places where proteins are going to be produced. Ribosomes here as well, and then ribosomes here. Not only do you have the ribosomes floating free inside the cytoplasm, but you're also going to have them connected to the endoplasmic reticulum. And again, as we go through more detail specific to each organelle, uh, we will talk about those 
uh, items. So this has been our introduction into cell theory and the difference between prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells. Uh, in the next lecture, we're going to get into more detail about eukaryotic cell structures uh, that we mentioned in this particular video. If you guys have any questions, please make sure that you are uh, taking the notes as you watch the videos and bring those questions to lectures so that we've covered any of the misconceptions and hopefully get you guys moving in the right direction. Have a great day.